Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, whom truly to know is everlasting life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. 
and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found him at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading a portion of Psalm 22 on page 5 of your bulletin. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him, my descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. And to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who was and is and is to come. Be seated. Ten days from now, four parishioners of St. Anne's will be confirmed here, right in this church. They've been preparing for the occasion, I suppose their whole lives, and certainly in the last few weeks through a brief series of classes called Reaffirming Our Faith, which culminates in a final session after this service. In the Episcopal Church, a bishop is required for confirmation, 
something the candidates and those who have participated with them in the course can tell you all about. The Right Reverend Bill Franklin, an assisting bishop in the diocese and friend of this parish, will join us on May 12th to preside, preach, and confirm Robin Burt, Mary Johnson, Scott Parker, and Ben Spear. Before the bishop has his turn, I will take this chance to reflect on the choice of our members to make a public commitment to the way of Jesus that we proclaim in this church. As it happens, the scriptures we've heard have a lot to say about their wish to grow in faith and to share their faith. So Robin, Mary, Scott, and Ben, I want to acknowledge that what you are doing is no small thing and that I am humbled by it. My reflection this morning is an expression of encouragement and gratitude for you. In the gospel today, Jesus tells his disciples that he is the true vine and that they are the branches on whom he is counting to bear fruit. He then proceeds to say a host of reassuring and rather challenging things in elaborating on this idea. The image of the vine is potent and even comforting for me. It's as comforting and inviting as knowing Jesus to be the good shepherd, that figure of speech Jesus used to describe himself in an earlier passage in John, which we heard last Sunday. Jesus as the vine conveys an even deeper notion of connection between Jesus and his followers and by extension with the church. One that implies intimacy and frankly, a kind of maternal bond. Disciples who are branches bearing fruit derive nourishment and sustenance from the vine and are linked, therefore, through something, to my mind at least, of an umbilical cord. The medieval mystic Julian of Norwich saw Jesus as a mother, and it may be that she was inspired in part from these verses, by these verses. We hear Jesus inviting imploring his followers to abide in him as he abides in them. This makes the relationship generative, he says. Without him, they will languish. The term abide is uttered nine times by Jesus in the course of this short passage. And I hope this repetition convinces you, confirmands, and all of us, that we who are created in the love of, in love with God's image imprinted upon us are welcomed to dwell in the heart of God, in the heart of Jesus that is the heart of God beating with love for us. Now, if you sense urgency and determination in Jesus' teaching, you should know this passage is embedded in several chapters in the Gospel of John, which are together referred to as the farewell discourses. We'll hear from them not only today, but in, over the next two Sundays. Like anyone facing death, Jesus is invested in a future beyond his time on earth. And just as his disciples need him, he shows them he needs them to bear fruit, for the vine to extend to places through space and all time where new growth is possible. We are the beneficiaries of this growth and reminders of the continued hope and expectation for us abound here in this church. Just as for Mother Kate, who referenced it in her newsletter reflection this week, today's gospel passage instantly brought to mind the wild vines that surround us in our church. And I 
I'm going to ask the technical director to see if he can show the folks at home uh, all about them as I uh, reference them here and invite all of you to look around you. Chiseled into the capitals of the immense columns here that support the structure are capitals, I'm sorry, are, are the images of uh, the vine growing abundantly. And also, in th the, the same image exists in finials and planted in the ceiling and in the decorative brass uh, dangling beneath the altar railing, the railing at the high altar. Mother Kate also mentioned the strong root of the Jesse tree anchoring each one of the stained glass windows in St. Anne's. These all add to the remarkable beauty here as they adorn this sacred space and they are powerful symbols of our grounding and connection in the living God. Of course, there is a big picture to this compelling imagery and its meaning. Mother Kate makes the point of saying in her reflection that growth is hard. <laughs> Here in this passage, Jesus reminds us it will take pruning and removing of branches for the, vines, for the vine to thrive. He makes clear that God, who is the vine dresser, will cut back and remove what does not produce fruit. I won't speculate about what or who is signified by the withered branches that are gathered and thrown in the fire. I have confidence in the God of love and mercy to execute God's judgment justly. More challenging to me is the talk of pruning to make thriving branches more fruitful. Whenever gardening is referenced in the scriptures, I wish I were more knowledgeable about it, <laughs> but I'm just not. Pruning is particularly mysterious to me because it involves taking away, lopping off, really, something that's not dead, but that can be done without to bolster or revive a plant. Now, I become deeply uncomfortable by associations with things that people do, people who are not God, deciding what or who is disposable. The modern world is rife with examples in, for example, I'm sorry, uh, examples like the determination to prune and remove black lives, Asian and Pacific Islander lives, immigrant lives, the lives of those targeted by mass shooters and haters, the votes of American citizens by state and local governments, the voices of citizens by armies, autocrats, and dictators in other nations. The church, too, over the generations, and still in some corners, has succeeded in iterations of pruning by excluding the full participation of entire groups of people. We see that the true vine persists, however, in extending and expanding. And we know these misguided and faithless abuses of power bear no relation to the spiritual pruning with which God tends God's beloved. And I'm thinking of you now, dear confirmands, as I ponder the significance of pruning by God in your life and how it has led to your embrace of Jesus' invitation to you to be more faithful. The spirit that will be invoked at your confirmation has led you to this moment. It is the spirit that Jesus promises to the disciples in other verses in the farewell discourses and again before he departs from them at his ascension in the first chapter of Acts. When he tells them to spread his message in Jerusalem and throughout all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
And it is the same spirit that animates the interaction between Philip and the worshiper from Ethiopia who, is sent, who he is sent to meet along a wilderness road in today's passage from Acts. This is a crazy and wonderful story that is more than a simple narrative. It follows, uh, to my mind, a divine logic. The setup is challenging. Philip and the Ethiopian are from different cultures. The fact that the latter is identified as a eunuch adds to his status as other and outsider. They have every reason to be suspicious of one another. But instead, they express openness to the gifts and yearnings of each other. Their spirit-driven and spirit-filled interaction provides each with an opportunity to teach and lead the other in some way. Philip is invited by the Ethiopian to join him in his chariot and interpret the scripture for him, after which the Ethiopian brings Philip to the water for his baptism. I agree with New Testament scholar Matt Skinner, who says this encounter is about expanding horizons, Philip's, the Ethiopian's, and ours. These men stand at the edge of the known world in their time, for Philip at least, and show us what it means to witness to the ends of the earth by the power of the Holy Spirit, as Jesus envisioned. Robin, Mary, Scott, and Ben. I don't know what setbacks and sufferings, what losses and learnings have made you as ready as you are to heed the call to take up your cross and to invite others to discover in it the love of God for the world and all its people. But we are so glad for it. By reaffirming your faith through confirmation, you are demonstrating your readiness to expand your own horizons and your readiness to model a commitment to growing in faith and sharing the faith to which we are all called. You're embodying a connection to, the, to Jesus, the true vine and source of eternal nourishment as it extends through inclusion of a great and glorious array of fruit-filled branches entangled in the best sense in mission. May you bear more and more fruit in this new chapter and along every step in your pursuit of the way, the truth, and the life in him. We're standing with you and counting on you. We are with you as fellow travelers. Amen. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them hope, give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to you, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in, the, in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. It's fun to watch you wave to one another. We'll be able someday to get out of our pews and hug and shake hands and all that good stuff, hopefully before too long, but we're doing what's called for now. Uh, I'm Canon John Dinero, the rector of St. Anne's, 
I'm very grateful to be here on this beautiful day here in Brooklyn, in New York. Um, grateful for you, grateful for uh, uh, my colleague, Mother Marie Tetro, supporting uh, our, us by presiding at this service. Uh, Father Craig Townsend's out with the children in the garden. Uh, you may have heard the bells ringing during the gospel, which seemed quite lovely, actually. Um, the altar guild, thank you. The readers today, thank you. And folks at home uh, who are doing their part, um, Carlos here as well. Um, I suppose I don't need to mention the confirmation coming up on May 12th. <laughs> you might have heard. Um, but uh, what you don't uh, necessarily know uh, is that there will be uh, a registration form available uh, for that if you can join us in person. And there'll also be a link to the service uh, for a uh, remote uh, attendance uh, or uh, to, to, to participate, attend online. And, um, and that is really the biggest announcement I have. Um, and so bless you this day, and bless our candidates for confirmation, and bless Carol Stone, who has another announcement. Oh, Carol, Carol's, Carol and others here would like me to remind you uh, that the alms basins, the, the, um, there is an opportunity to make uh, support St. Anne's uh, with the offering plates here, and I believe one uh, at the usher's table at the entrance of the near the entrance of the church. Thank you, uh, Carol, and thank you all for your great support, always. Love as Christ loved us and gave himself a sacrifice for us.
stand as you are able. God be with you. So with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he, destroyed, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and, power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us, made us worthy to stand before you, in Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember Christ's death, death. We, we remember Christ's, Christ's resurrection, resurrection. And we, we await, await Christ's coming, coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary the God-bearer, Saint Anne, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And so as Jesus taught us, we now pray. Our Father, Our Father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed in, on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, God, Heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, you have have graciously graciously accepted us as living living members of your your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ. and you you have fed us with spiritual food in the the sacrament sacrament of his body and blood. Send Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.